Hello everyone and welcome back to Mail Time. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about the idea of searching. See this beautiful Pikachu VMAX Hyper? You could also call them Secret Rare. Uh, this is the card everyone wants from the new Vivid Voltage set. We pulled him the other day for Ninja Bread. Congratulations, Ninja Bread. This is his card. And uh, I wanted to teach you a little bit about searching. Searching sucks. Searching is when somebody opens up booster packs and then they pull the card they want. And then what they do is they take the rest of the booster packs or booster boxes that they own and they list them up on eBay. And then you unwittingly buy them thinking that you have a chance to pull this Pikachu when in reality you do not have a chance to pull that Pikachu because it's already been pulled. So that's called searching and it's a bad term. It's kind of like weighing packs, searching and weighing. Uh, they're both very bad. Uh, you, basically, someone is stealing from you when you buy searched packs. How does searching work? Uh, well, basically, you can get a fresh case of booster packs. A, a case is, see this guy? He's a booster box. And you can fit six of these into a factory sealed case. That's the thing that, you know, the uh, distributors actually ship. They're these long boxes. They'll have six booster boxes in them. And, uh, you know, I've been pulling probably, I'm, I must be in the top 5% of people who open packs per year just because of the unique position I'm in to open packs for you guys on this channel. So I have a really intuitive sense of what you're expecting to pull each case, each box, right? I've been doing it so long. And let me tell you something I've never seen. See, so this is the chase card for this set. This is the card everyone wants in the same case. Right, so remember, case is six boxes. In the same case, you will never pull this card twice, this particular card, the chase. You will never pull it twice from the same case. So as soon as the card is gone from the case, you know that the rest of the case, although it may have other hyper rares that you might want, it's not going to have that Pikachu VMAX. I've never seen that. Does that make sense? So two hyper rare Charizards, I've never seen them come out of the same case. Two hyper rare Pikachus, VMAXs, I'll probably never see them come out of the same case. Is it possible? Probably in theory, but you know, there's some guys sitting up in a, in a room who decide how the cards are distributed, how the RNG works, and it just, it, it never has happened on this channel, uh, and maybe one day it will, but it's so rare, I can almost guarantee you, once this Pikachu is out of the case, the rest of the booster boxes and the rest of the packs will not have Pikachu VMAX Hyper. That's searching, and the more people that are aware of it, the better, in my opinion. You should be very careful how you order your packs because, uh, you know, if you're buying from what appears to be a regular collector, you're increasing your odds that he's already pulled the Pikachu VMAX, and now he's selling, he's kind of dumping his bad packs off on you, and you're the sucker. You don't want to be the sucker, okay? So one of the things that happens on my channel is we pull a lot of great cards. Uh, a lot of Charizards come out. I'm sure we'll get a lot of Pikachu VMAXs. How does this happen? I actually pretty much only stick to factory sealed cases, and that's it. And we open all of our, I don't resell any of my stuff online, that's not fair. So, you know, if he's already been pulled, you can take a break from opening Vivid if you don't, if you know, if you really only want the Pikachu V. Again, there's a lot of other cool cards. Did you, did you guys see what I pulled on uh, TikTok? I got Alistair, Cape of Toughness, and where'd the Rayquaza go? Oh, here he is. I pulled this on TikTok earlier. So there's a lot of cards other than the Pikachu and the Vivid Voltage set to go after. It's not just Pikachu. Oop, there's a Charger back there. I didn't mean to grab him. Yep, lots of great cards in the set, but now you understand searching a little bit. Hit the likes, thumbs up button or subscribe button or whatever if you want to show your appreciation. For those of you who are very new to this, that's a probably a concept you've never heard of before, searching and weighing. And of course, most of you guys already know about weighing. Weighing is when you try to use a little scale to find out if the pack's a little heavier or not. That doesn't really work so well with uh, modern cards, but uh, maybe it does work. Who knows? Anyways, who knows? I wouldn't want to talk about it. Let's open up some mail. We're four minutes in and I haven't opened up any mail at all. So we got to get some mail open. Fragile. <laughs> God, I wish that. I wish when you put a fragile writing on your package that the people at the distribution centers actually cared, but they generally do not. <laughs> Guess if you wrote it all over the package, maybe then. I actually used to work for UPS. When I saw a box that said fragile, it meant nothing to me. <laughs> it, it literally meant nothing. Oh, Dark Tyranitar PSA 10. Beautiful. I saw this pop up on the market. Really happy to have that. You guys want me to teach you how to look up uh, the population of a card so that you understand rarity? Let's look up the PSA population of a card. So I've got my laptop here. And I'm going to type into the Google search bar, PSA pot report. Okay. 
PSA pot report. This is just for PSA uh, uh, cards. You know, I'm sure BGS has something exactly like it. You end up with a website like this, PSA population report. You type your card in here. So I'm just going to type in, uh, I guess, Dark Tyranitar. Dark Tyranitar. Should reveal more than one set because I believe there's a... Here we go. Yeah, so there's a Neo Destiny Dark Tyranitar. But here it is. You got EX Team Rocket Returns. We'll want to click on that. Okay. Come on. <laughs> and we got the searcher over here. We're going to type in tier for Tyranitar, right? And now there's a few different types of Tyranitars. Uh, our card is number 20. So here we go, 20. We got 20 Dark Tyranitar and Dark Tyranitar Hollow. Actually, here we go. We got the third one right here, the reverse foil. This is what I have. I have the reverse foil. You can see there's 12 tens in the world. See, this is PSA 10 up here. There's 12 of them, and I've got two of them now. That's the second one. So I have, this is my second Dark Tyranitar. Huge fan of the Team Rocket sets. You know, I really like Team Rocket. So I'm happy to have that. You know, what I thought about doing, I thought about maybe uh, pricing him up a little bit because I know how rare he actually is. This guy probably does not show up to the market very often at all. So I thought about just raising the price and selling it off to you guys so that somebody else out there can have a dark tyranitar in their collection and i guess i would take the profits and try to get another car but yeah he looks fantastic now that i'm holding him really well centered perfect what do you think of that dark tyranitar he was expensive he was not cheap but you know i have usually i have a little bit of cash kind of stored away just in case something i really like pops up and uh, he did pop up and i grabbed him let's see what else dark tyranitar huh i'm a big fan of tyranitar he's one of my favorite pokemon Okay, I got a brown box here. Sorry, you can't see it. It won't fit on the table. Looks like I got another PSA card. I'll toss this box right here. I got to do some shipping. You know, I fell behind on shipping, and here I am not doing shipping. I'm working on a, a video. <laughs> it's tough, man. I'm busy. Necrozma 9. So uh, what's going on here, this is a Burning Shadows 9, and I figured that... Yeah, okay, so this one does not have the cutting error on it. I figured Burning Shadows has so much trouble with the cutting error that even the nines would be valuable. And what I thought I could do, actually, is even offer the, these guys in the smalls because we, we don't have enough PSA cards. So people are needing PSA cards for the small custom booster pack games that we host during the live stream. And a Burning Shadows 9 is actually not that bad of a deal. And the Necrozma won't really be that expensive, so he won't take up too many spots. He'll just be a very nice, kind of cool prize. And I think, you know, in the future, when the, these modern cards are no longer modern, they're considered vintage, I think he'll actually hold some value. What do you think? Let's do another piece of mail. I don't have too much mail. Ooh, this feels kind of like bubble wrappers. These are kind of large if they are. I've been waiting for these, I think. Are these what I think? Oh, no. They're much larger than I thought they were going to be. <laughs> well, this isn't going to work. So, that's a pity. <laughs> Here they are. See these giant mailers? Uh, what I was going to do is I was going to use these for my Rocket Custom Boosters, right? Um, I did not realize how gigantic these were going to be. So these will just be used, be used for regular shipping. I wanted something about this size. See, I'm trying to make booster packs for these rocket cards. Uh, if it was a little larger than that, that was going to be okay. But this is much larger. That's too bad. Maybe I can, like, trim them down or something. I don't know. Damn, dude. Those are huge. Put that away. We'll place these to the side. I thought I ordered more than that, too. It looks like he sent me, like, ten of them. What the hell? I could have sworn I, I ordered much more than that. Oh, well. We'll put those into the shipping supplies pile, because that's probably what they'll actually be used for now. Now I have to think about what I'm going to do for those rocket packs. What else we got? From David. This one says it's from David from Japan. Look at that. Japan. How cool is that? I love getting mail from Japan. All right. I'm a little concerned with the method of shipping here. You can see this has been bent right here. When you ship something, if the only protection you give it is a piece of paper, it might not be enough. 
here's the inside piece of paper. Yeah, well, we'll see what happens. Clinique Matsukura. Oh, okay, it's gonna be all right. Oh, I ordered two of these, huh? I didn't even know that. Cool. Well, that one looks to be in very good shape. For those of you who don't recognize this, this is uh, this is going to be Sky Ridge Japanese. That's what it is. And we have one right now. It's called Mysterious Mountain. That's the name of that pack. That's uh, Maybe you'll have the charger in it. Who knows? Mysterious Mountain. I've got this custom booster pack game where <laughs> it started, but nobody's jumped into it yet. It's because I have too many custom booster pack games going on right now. Uh, but this is going to be in here. We actually have another one over here. This is my second one now. Let's see. Where did the other one go? I think I put it back here. Did I put it back here? Yeah. There it is. So you guys saw me open this last time, and you can do the front of the card's kind of like worn, so I don't want to send this one off to grade. We take a look at this one. This one looks a lot nicer. Maybe it will grade a nine if I'm lucky. Shows you how hard it is even to grade packs. Uh, I really like vintage booster packs. I'm a big fan of it. We talk a lot about investing. Uh, all YouTubers do these days. Invest, you know, question mark, or exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, right? You've seen those listings on eBay. Well, anyways, vintage booster packs are a much safer investment than modern, in my opinion. What you might look at for modern are ones that are about to become vintage. That's another thing you should consider, okay? So these are really expensive. These are like $1,000 almost uh, each, right? And yeah, they're just really pricey. I think they're like $800. What's next? Another piece of mail. Mail time. Woohoo! Hope you guys are enjoying mail time. We learned about searching right in the beginning of the video, and now we're getting our mail opened. And I don't think I'll have time to open any packs this time. We opened up some All-Stars last time. Hey, did you guys see it? So in the last live stream, Tony, uh, I don't know how to say his last name, Kieros, he pulled a Golden Lucario Mel Metal. That's the third gold card we pulled. Very cool. All right, what do we have here? Another PSA card. I bought a few PSA cards to get us ready for uh, the small. There it is. Look at that. So this is Gym Challenge First Edition Fire Energy. It's not particularly rare. However, it is vintage. See, it's 2000, and it's from the Gym Challenge set. I think that's a little more fun than the Gym Hero set. And uh, I figured this would be a nice, affordable card to get into the small. Is this gym challenge card. Yeah, so this won't cost too much. I don't know what it's going for. Maybe it's like 80 bucks or something. I'm not sure. Um, might be cheaper than that. Looks like it's off-center. It's chubby on the top. But yeah, it's a, a decent quality card. I like it. And uh, believe it or not, even these old energy cards, despite the fact that there were so many of them, uh, they're considered vintage and fairly collectible. If you look up like first edition, base set, Fire Energy cards. By the way, Fire's the most popular one. If you look it up, I think it goes for like $400 now. Actually, we can go look it up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't want that to knock the camera over. <laughs> Whenever I hear that sliding noise, it makes me nervous. Like, what's going on? So, first edition, Fire, Gym, Challenge, PSA. Oh, wait, wait, we wanted uh, base set. <laughs> first edition, base. And we're going to say PSA 10. Here we go. We're going to say Fire Energy. And it looks like the most expensive one to sell sold recently on November 11th for like $400, dude. Damn, that's PSA 10 base set. So it's not like the energy cards have zero value. They just don't have as much value as the Pokemons themselves, but uh, yeah, they're still collectible. I think it's pretty cool. So these two can be placed into the small, and uh, it just gives us something to hand out. You know, we want to have something fun in the custom booster pack games. Something fun. Let's see, what else we got? You know, I think I have a box somewhere. I do. I, I never opened it, but I need to, and I didn't bring it over here. But you know what? We're already at 15 minutes. I think that's long enough. Uh, let me know in the comments section what kind of topics you'd like me to talk about. I've got a lot of great ideas. Um, there's the issue of Logan Paul saying he's done. Are the prices too high? Let me give you my short answer. Uh, number one, no, I don't think the prices are too high, except for some cases with the modern. And is Logan Paul really leaving? 
Yeah, you know, Logan Paul can say whatever he wants. Uh, look at his actions, not his words. He didn't sell his base set collection. He just said he's done buying for now. I'd be done buying for now too if I was him because the price of the cards are very high, likely because he came around and made it look like he was going to buy all the cards. Do you see what I'm saying? So he didn't sell his base set. I don't think he's really done with Pokemon cards. All right, that's going to be the end of mail time for today. I want to thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys next time.